Hey you guys, it's time for a longer rapid game. This is a 30 minute game, no increment, against an opponent rated exactly 1500. So I'm currently 1569 in rapid. Alright, so I mean I'm normally playing Vienna um, or King's Gambit here. We could go for a King's Gambit. Seeing as my opponent's lower rated. Zoltar. So we've let um, two kittens go today. Okay, King's Gambit is accepted. We're going to play the Bishop's Gambit with Bishop C4. The most natural move here is Knight F3, preventing the Queen from coming down. But if the Queen does come down, you've got King F1, which is okay. And now this Queen is likely to lose tempo when Knight to F3 comes. Yeah, so our two eldest kittens have gone to a new home this morning. So we've had some tears from the wife. It's the problem of having a big heart. But hey, I'm surrounded by six more who are currently having their own little fight club in here. Okay, so he's not he's not gone for this bishop move, which always falls to d4. It's very, very commonly played. Um, so it's, it's really tempting here to play knight to f3 with tempo. Um, but the question is, is it the right time for that move? This is the thing, you know. No one's taking this move away from me. I'm going to have this move. Now, I'm expecting that bishop is going to come to b7, putting pressure on this pawn. However, I can easily defend with uh, pawn to d3. That also comes with an attack on, on this. So, um, the thing is, knight here, then the queen just, just moves. But, I mean, you know, at the same time, it's a reasonable developing move. d4 is also a thought, actually. D4 prevents the bishop from coming out here. If D4, bishop here, I could even push on if I wanted to into black's territory. But I am just tempted to play this move. It's, it's very, very tempting. I don't know if it's the right move, but we'll see. So if you do hear lots of kind of uh, environmental sounds, I'm just inundated with fighting kittens. They want to fight everything. I've got a blue roll, which you may be able to see on the floor behind me, which comes from our, our catering exercises, um, and was as left there, and they have decided just to kill it. Okay. Now, queens come to h5. The downside with this move is undefends this pawn. Okay, so I do now... I'm thinking d3 or d4 makes a lot of sense. We can also bring the knight out at any point. I'm, I'm still expecting, I'm anticipating bishop b7 looking at this now. Um, if d4, bishop here, this, this pawn here is under threat, that's the problem. Um, there, there, block with the bishop. Could be interesting. I can't play my knight here looking at f7. Can't play my knight here looking at f7. So is d3 just the better move here? Is it better than d4? Or should I just develop the knight? Now I think occupying the center is principled. So I'm, I'm going to go for d4. It may come back to bite me. I know this, this pawn is now totally undefended, but I can also always play queen e1. I can bring this knight out to a couple of squares. I am threatening to capture this pawn here. And opponent... Well, that is peculiar. My, uh, my first thought is b3, defend. If he wants to come up on the attack, right, I can recapture and I get a nice, ni very nice pawn structure in the middle. I have to do something about this. Now, moving off to one side isn't uh, legal because I would be in check. The bishop is pinned. So, I mean, queen d3 is a thought, or queen e2. There, if he takes, I get a queen on c4, which then looks at the c7 pawn, kind of like that. 
my king isn't going to castle either side because he's already moved. So is b3 a thought? b3, I could then even fianchetto this bishop. I kind of like that move. So I'm going to go with that one. I'm still threatening f4. If my bishop gets to f4, note that the c7 pawn is still undefended. I wouldn't be surprised if he plays c5. Yeah, um, that was a bit of a surprise, that bishop move, I have to say. And he's gone for it. He's gone for it. He's given me this ginormous center. Look at that. Look at that control. All these squares here in my opponent's side of the board are locked down. I'm also attacking this pawn that's undefended. And the only piece he's got out in the board is the lady. And this, my friends, feels like a concession. It really does. <clears throat> now, one thought is to move my knight out. That would drop my queen, so that's not even possible. Um, I'm thinking bishop fianchetto to b2. Uh, or knight to d2, knight b to d2 also makes a lot of sense. In whichever order. Let's play the bishop out first. Because then I'm, I can threaten d5 at any point with a discovery against the rook. Okay. He's defused that idea. I'm going to play knight d2. Knight bd2. Now the queen is defended by that rook. One of the downsides of this kind of position, when the queen comes out and you have to move the king to f1, is that it, it gets harder to connect the rook. So you know, at some point I might have to lift my king off the back rank. There's no problem with a check here. There's no problem with really of this pawn coming forward. There, there. Hmm. And now my knight has a nice square here. Whew, it's defended only by that pawn. Rook b1 is a thought. You know, I've got semi-open file here. Um, okay. Hmm. Really want to get a rook on e1. Or could I just stick my queen on, for example, e2? And then just try and push through in the middle. Bang, bang. I've got my knight, I've got my bishop. Yeah. I'm actually quite well coordinated here, and black is still behind. Very tardy. Am I worried about this move? I might have to swing back round. That's not playable because I can't take. That's uh, just winning. Okay, another pawn move. 11 moves and his knights are still at home. Still stabled. Okay, but he's now attacking. We said c5 would come. Now attacking this twice. It's defended twice. That's not a problem. I can't just push the pawn because my bishop's undefended. So the pawn's actually pinned. If he takes here, however, I'm all right. I'll, I'll just recapture and go for it. Now, how about e5 now? e5, I'm threatening to take the pawn with a discovered check. Black can't have that. I do e5. D, e. D, e. Or there, D, e. Knight takes. Pretty cool. Rook e1, is that is that even necessary? e5, bishop can't take, pawn, I'm sure the pawn will take. Or he'll push d5. In which case I'll probably just press on. Um, he's not going to take here. Pawn's going to take, yeah. I'll probably recapture with a pawn. Well, let's let's have a look. Let him do it on his thinking time, not mine. Okay, so after pawn takes here. If I take back with a knight, we could have a trade of queens. I don't think I want that. I think his queen is 
far less useful than mine right now. Okay. I can just take back with a queen. No, I can't, because bishop takes queen. Ouch. Right. So I don't want to take with a knight. I can't take with a queen. I don't want to trade queens. So that's out the window. So is it pawn takes? It is. I may still bring my rook over to e1, maybe even d1. You know, bring my put my rooks, both of my rooks here would be great. Really taking advantage of the fact that my opponent hasn't castled. Now the knight can't come out to f f6. I'm not threatening to push this pawn because again the bishop hangs. Easiest way to defend the bishop, only real way is, is rook b1. Which is then, you know, it's possible. Okay, two attackers, two defenders. I'm not sweating. Um, maybe I should bring this rook into play. King here. Is the knight going to come in here? No, I'll just eliminate it. Yeah, I think I want to bring this rook over. I'm feeling pretty good about myself right now. Got a nice little square there for a knight too. That comes with a nice check threat, actually. Ooh! Okay. Something happened. So he's got his king out of the very dangerous center. And over to the marginally less dangerous queen side. Right? He lacks pawn protection here. However, I have a dark square bishop that's pointing the wrong way. Um, neither rook is so, f so far engaged. There is a thought just to send Andy on a suicide mission. But also, this move that I previously identified is still good. I'm liking this move. One of the problems with that move is it blocks the queen's defense of the pawn on e5, which is currently attacked twice. Um, Maybe rook b1 to defend this. That gives me options with the pawn. Or rook h e1. There's another defender on that one. That seems to be very logical. Queen attacks this. It's defended by the knight. Let's do this one first. That then frees up this pawn. I like the look of a4, a5. It's not the the quickest manoeuvre, but if it does material damage to my opponent's position. So look, there's queen e4 as well, attacking this knight that's undefended. Kind of like that idea. He wants to come in with check, does he? How about just h3 then? He can't come in there. If he comes in there, I've got queen e4, and that actually forks both knights. So he'll have to then pivot one of them back to defend the other. But then... So, so I'm going to, if he comes in here, I come in there, I'll have to move this one back. I don't know. <clears throat> Looks kind of hairy to me. Hey guys, uh, Morgan. Now... That pawn's undefended, that knight's undefended. Queen e4 now. He's put three attackers on here though now. That's what's changed. Yeah. Um, three attackers on there. Rook h e1. Takes, 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 takes. Rook takes, I take back. Oh, I've got three defenders, actually. So I don't even need to do that move. If I come here, forking knight and pawn, he's going to have to do something about his knight, is he not? Um, this feels like a sensible move, but it's a question of, is it the moment to strike? Is the iron hot? What's he going to do? He can't take 
If I if I do queen e4, he can't take here because he loses a piece. Trade, trade, yeah. So he can't take his capture his way out. If he comes here, I'll probably just snatch him off. And then also, there's a danger of this. I think it's looking strong. Just depends what my opponent finds. What are you going to do, Zoltar? He might bring the king up to defend the knight. One, two, three. I, I feel I'm moving this rook across. This knight's a bit awkward. Can't really get anywhere useful. Even coming back, there's not really any. Yep, that's not a major surprise. Right, I really want to get a knight there. So here, here, here is, is a thought. There, one, two, and then either of these squares looks great. Okay, so let's pull the trigger on that one. I'm quite happy about e5. She's calling her babies now for a feed. She's doing exceptionally well. For a little cat, she's uh, hatched six kittens and managed to feed them all for several weeks. She's doing a great job. Queen can't come in with check. Knight comes in, it's lost. Knight comes here, it's lost. This pawn still hangs, by the way. That also means the bishop's undefended. I forgot about that, didn't I? Bishop can't come here. Then, actually, if I grab this pawn, the queen's no longer defending that one. He's got three attackers. He'll just capture with the bishop, right? And I can't take here. So right now, this bishop's not very, not very useful. If I did this, I'm getting an edge pawn, but I'm losing a centre pawn, which is the focus of the, a lot of the game, um, and breathing new life into that dark square bishop, which I do not want to do. At the same time, my dark square bishop is similarly awkward. One, two, three. Slow manoeuvre. Also, the knight coming to c3 blocks one of my defenders of that pawn. So maybe I need to bring my rook across again as well. I don't know. Um, is there any other route round to there? Can't come by this square. So it's got to be by this square if I'm going to do it. This knight is four jumps away from that square. You know, one, two, three, four, for example. Uh, so that's even slower. One, two, three for this knight. Oh. Did not expect that move. Yeah, obviously I can capture on Passant, but that drops the queen. Then I get a bishop, and I'm not going to promote, so that's out of the question. I think I just need to drop the queenie back, not to here, so it's going to be e2 or e1. Obviously can't go here. Can't go there, can't go there. So the question is e2 or e1, and I think it's got to be e2. That gives the possibility of this. No, it doesn't. We're okay. All right, he saved this pawn, but that really isn't... That's more of a distraction than anything. Okay, what are you trying to do? Double up your rooks? Well, two can play at that game. Still da da da. He's still got three attackers on here. Seems like it's all about e5. He really, really is trying to capture e5.
I like the fact he's taking some initiative. I do not like this this kind of these weird cluster of very awkward pieces over here. The Queen's not done anything in a while. Got pawn h4. Queen can't take because it's defended by the knight. But if pawn takes, knight takes. Still might trade queens. Not entirely delighted about that idea. Someone just under 19 minutes. Opponents on 20 minutes 30. So plenty of time. He's actually quite solid over here. I do feel like I really want to bust something open there. His focus is all about this pawn, it seems. Knight, no. Nope. There, there. So now if takes, 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 yeah. So now it doesn't work, right? But with an, an extra rook there, he gets a pawn, I take, take. He's up a pawn. I take, take. I take rook, he takes queen, I take rook. That's actually kind of equal. I may be even one pawn up after that, I'm not sure. Let's see what dies. Okay. Oh! Oh! Well, so he's removing the defender of the pawn. Good use of a pawn, actually. If I take, he's got knight takes with check. I can come back here. He hasn't got queen there because of that. If I move my knight, back takes takes, and I'm pretty safe. Move, move my knight back. Also, pawn takes. Not the end of the world. Actually, if, if pawn takes and I move my knight, his pawn is pinned. Because his queen's undefended there. Can't bring my knight back here, because that's a, a fork on king and, and knight. The knight back here is, is an option. So knight back, or takes. That's the option. Knight G G G one or takes. Knight. If I move my knight, this pawn is actually pinned. It can't move forward and can't take. So I'm going to do that. Weird though it looks. Now it's still a situation of three attackers, three defenders. But the problem is that defender number two is my queen. So I believe now he can win the pawn, which is what he's always wanted. Don't think I want to take there. This pawn is pinned because queen takes queen. Should this pawn move forward? I'll probably just take it, I don't know. But he's doing well. I like. I, I, I'm enjoying how well he's managed to push forward for initiative and space. You know, at the same time, I've let him do this, and he is still a pawn up. Hmm. So if he takes here now. I take, bishop takes, I'm not going to take back with the queen. He's not going to take with a rook, though. So I actually feel like he's um, he's better right now. Good job, it's unrated, eh? But I rarely play 30 minute, although I, I think it is, it's conducive to good chess. Most of my rapid is still 10 minute no increment. And I, I tend to do quite well at that time format. 
you find people who are playing kind of five minute blitz in a 10 minute game. No, he, he, he just can't do that. He loses his queen if he moves that pawn. So is he contemplating this or is he contemplating capturing that pawn with bishop or knight? I feel like I may eliminate my dark squared bishop because it's such a poor piece. He takes with his bishop. I'm pretty much forced to. Then he's got like rook takes on the second capture. And my queen is actually very much out of squares. I do have this as an option as well. Upping the ante with the threat against his queen. Now bishop takes here, I take, hit the queen. He's got pawn takes or knight takes with check. But again, whatever takes is pinned because of this. Particularly if we don't do a, a, a bunch of... A, a, okay, that's caught me by surprise. <sighs> that really has. But he took his time over that move. So what's he thinking? Take. Knight takes with check. I drop back. That's undefended. But I can't attack it with my queen because all these squares are covered by pawns. Uh, that at least defends my bishop. What on earth is the point of this? I don't understand. That's defended three times. That's not defended. Can I get my queen out? Can I get my queen active? Well, this pin's kind of useful though. This knight wanted to come round, round, round. I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry on with that plan because, and also we've got a possibility of a trade-off of rooks now, which might just simplify things in the middle a bit. These pieces are still somewhat out of bounds, so he's, he's playing with, really with his rooks at the moment. So if he takes, rook takes, then my queen is a bit freer. If he captures in the middle, I'm going to trade off my dark square bishop, I think, whatever. This is going to force something to come back. Interesting. Okay, apologies guys. Um, had to answer the call of nature. Um, that's one of the other downsides of playing 30 minute games. Sometimes nature intervenes. Now, a lot of people would just, I think, immediately just recapture with the rook. I'm thinking of queen takes because I've got threat of this. Which means king has to go back to one of these light squares. And it can't be that one because the knight falls. So, queen takes. If I get to play this, king has to go to b seven and that's a nice place it still maintains this pin on this pawn here so i'm going to take with a queen it means i've i've got that two defenders on here but I and mean, if bishop takes i can't go there in fact if the pawn falls i can't go there because that's a defender of that square so it's probably what he's thinking But I like the fact I've got a centralised queen. His queen, however, is looking very marginalised here. But this is a this is a move. A check here. Force my king back. There's nothing else for it. I can't. I, there, the queen takes. It's just horrible. 
Okay, so queen here, I have to go back to f1 with the king. Huh, okay, well this can force a trade of queens. Um, I'm in check, I can't go there, I can't go there, I can't go there, it's forced. We might have trade off and then just drop this pawn, okay. Now it's three attackers and only one defender. The question is now, with this flurry of exchanges, it changes the relative strengths of these pieces. Now he's, he's got a weakness with his double pawns on the f5. My knight wants to try and centralise itself as soon as possible. Now we have to reassess the relative strength of these bishops. Do I want to trade off my dark squared bishop? Take here, say knight takes. But that's a move. I've got to do something because my bishop's under threat itself. So what do I do? Move out the way and counterattack in the middle. Um, I could go there. If he wants to trade off, I improve my knight. That's actually not bad. If I take, he's got options. I think. I think here looks interesting. It's a centralised knight on a protected square would be really lush, and then that pawn is definitely a weakness. Notice he's, he's got two knights on the same rank as well, one of which is defended by the king. This knight is just really bad; can only go backwards right now. Okay, he's taken. Right, well, that's a no-brainer. So my knights are now wanting to come towards the centre to try and dominate the space. And knight d5 is actually just wins the pawn back. Whereas, well, I'm actually two pawns down right now. I also have double pawns on the c file, which isn't great. So his advantage is two pawns against four over on the king side. It just doesn't quite feel like that big of an advantage right now, because they're all kind of scattered, divided, leaderless. There is one who could unite them. He turned from that path long ago. <sighs> I've got Rook on open file, but so does Black. Zoltar is playing a good game, and I'm enjoying it. does feel like I'm two pawns down. That's a lot. You know, materially, it's a lot. I mean, what he really should be doing maybe is just thinking about trading everything down. Problem is, he can't just push this pawn forward and trade it off. And this pawn's a long way from joining the fun as well. In fact, it's only destined for a logjam of its own. Logjamming. Classic film. Although not real. Don't be fatuous, Jeffrey. Anyone gets that quote, I'll be impressed. I'm sure, though. I'm sure there are a few out there. Miko, I'm sure, has already got ideas. But yeah, this this looks that's just great. It does kind of block off my open file. But then, you know, should the king stray onto the open file? Mm -hmm. Not good. Oh. Oh, you beat me to the punch, did you? Well, I've got this and then this. I'm going to throw in my check anyway. There can be no wrong in centralising my knight. Then I could come after your knight. right? Now, if I do that, what are you going to do? You can go there because you get taken. You can go there because you get taken. So no, no. That's possible. But again, you're kind of going somewhat out of bounds. Can't go there, you get taken can't go there, you get taken, because I've got two attackers. So it's this, or it's going back to where you came from. I also have this idea. Forks, rook, and pawn. That would force the rook to go to h8 or e7, I think. e7, I can come back and hit the rook again.
but it's not a strong position, I have to say. However, when this knight moves, I do have knight f3, and I like knight f3. I like the fact that it just locks off all of his pawns and he can't do nothing. Okay, now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check where this knight can go from here. It can go there. I can take, take. That's not great, right? So that is a fork. <sighs> right, let's say I just push forward and develop my knight. He's going to come here, which forces me to take the knight, which allows him to undouble his pawns, and that's plop. That's super plop. This move falls to that. Hell's teeth. Checkmate. So rook c1 hits the knight. Knight comes here. But at least it's no longer a fork. However, my king can't go to f2. So if whatever happens if he comes here, if I'm going to move my king, I have to move on to the e-file. And that then gives opponent a free capture with discovered check. Also not good. That, my friends, is a nasty position. Or, I take this pawn, with my knight, he gets this move with check, no, I just don't like I, I, I think I'm going to have to trade off there. So I think I'm going to have to do this, he comes there, takey, takey. I do then have this move as well, the fork. Yeah, I'm going to have to move my, my knight there. I, my king needs breathing room. The opponent has found a, a, a nice move there. But did I force him to do that? Well, not really, because I had to defend the pawn anyway. I mean, I suppose I could have played like this. Okay, there, he's done that. And I, I, I do just have to trade off, I think, because it's not like a... Well, I'm in check. I either go there and lose my rook outright, or trade off. <clears throat> right. He's attacking my pawn. I think we have to do this now. Whatever happens, I've got this. Attacks the knight. Knight can't go there or there, so the knight is going to have to come here. Can't go there. So the knight has to go back here. Has to. Now what about this? How do I defend this pawn? I don't. Maybe Harry is has to save the day here. I attack this pawn. He goes here, I'll do that. Right. We're going to have to go for this. I can centralise my knight and defend this. But he may just storm through on the queen side as well. Okay, so he's took that. Knight here defends that pawn at least, right? There he takes. I can't take this one. That's unpleasant. Knight here. He can't take there. And this advanced pawn here on g3 causing trouble. So for example, if I put my king here, he could check maybe on the back rank with that pawn. I think I need to do this move. Also, how about these about this and then rook takes on a7. Oh, that's looking a bit checkmatey actually, because the pawn guard's out. Look at that. If opponent loses his uh, concentration, so that should come. That's an immediate checkmate threat. And what can he do about it? He can move his king there, I take. He's not checkmate, because he goes hit. Oh, no, he doesn't, because the knight guards that square. Ha! Well, well, well. And then we're threatening to take a couple more pawns. I'm two pawns down. But Harry is looking like, you know, it's like these pawns right now are actually shielding Harry from trouble, as long as I can neutralize the horse. So it's far from over. I think the opponent's played a damn good game. Slow chess. It's the future, man. It's the way to go.
play longer games and analyse. It's not rocket science. Even check here, right? Forces the king there, takes check king here. But this is, that's actually mate, if nothing else happens. There's no increment here. Opponent is down to seven and a half minutes. That's plenty of time when you're two pawns up, if you can barge through. So let's say he comes after this pawn. I'm just, so my knight's going straight in there. In fact, my knight's pretty much going to go there, whatever happens. Okay, uh, that's forced. If he comes here, I'm coming back. Oh, actually, I've, I've also got this. Why am I talking about going back to the back rank? There's no hope there. <sighs> he comes here, I'm going to f3. I want to play this at the earliest opportunity. Go take the pawn, have it, it's yours. I don't want it. Uh, don't I just win a pawn there? Think I do. I think I do. You can't take that. If I do this though, he can still take it. I think that's his idea. But I'm in danger of actually equalizing in material here. Okay, if I come here now, he can take this pawn. We don't want that precious. So I'm going to have one of these ones. And I think it's this one, because I'm going to defend G2, eh? You can't push there. Brooks got that. We are equal. We have established equality. Okay, now he's doing that. Now I can grab this one if I want. Or do I just start pushing these up? I think that's what I need to do. So that's now out of harm's way of the rook. Now I can safely capture it. Well, I can't because there's a knight fork. Okay, well done if you spotted it. Okay, anytime you're looking about putting pieces in this opposition thing, you have to look out for knights. You're sneaky little bastards. And we have four pawns each. Okay, he, he want, he's, he's not letting me move my knight, is he? So, what do we do? Do we harass his knight? Where can his knight go? Um, I'm just going to move Harry for now. It feels like he's... He had an opportunity when he's two pawns up to press his advantage and he's kind of let it go. He knows he, he can't come away from this. But even if I let him do that, let's say I, I do this now, right? He captures the pawn, but it comes with check. So I want to get my king out of dodge. But then I don't want this, so I'm, I'm going to have to move my rook to a safer place. Maybe there. Yeah, maybe there, something like this. Still ready to come over. I've got to keep it on 7th. Rook stays on 7th, we know this. Okay. Don't see any problem with this move. I'm now threatening to win the pawn. I'm also now threatening this. This is a mating to if I'm unopposed. Here, king moves here. Um, okay. I go here, he takes the pawn with check, I attack the rook. He has to move the rook. Wherever he moves the rook, I'm going to play this. I think we are okay. 
You, you haven't got time to do that, my son. Because you're king. Okay, now you're out of checks. Oh, he got the pawn. He got the bloody pawn, didn't he? Right then. Okay, game on. Right, my rook defends this. No one is currently defending Harry. And Harry has died. No! That was a silly idea, wasn't it? But my, my knight was under attack. I had to do something about the knight. <sighs> right. His king is currently stuck. It's only one square. Let's hit the knight. What did I do wrong there? I didn't calculate it through, that's what I did wrong. I allowed him to take here, thinking, there, there, and you see, what I didn't notice was the second check that eliminated Charlie. Right, okay, so he's come here, good. My knight is out of range of any checks. This forces a trade of knights. That doesn't help us. Um, does that help us? No, I'm in check. Okay. Right then. Keeping my rook on the opposite colour to the knight. Generally a good idea to simplify things. Right, if it trades off... And I don't want to... I don't think I want to trade off knights. That forces a trade though. Ah. That's annoying. But it does split up his pawns as well. He can say, oh no, he's got rook takes. That should be winning for black, you know? Should be winning. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure about that move, my friend. Having said that, my king is now cut off. My king is now stuck in the top half of the board because of that rook. Maybe I should come down here. See if I can't sneak back behind the pawn. Okay. This is a losing position now. There, I'm attacking this pawn. Okay. Horrible. It's absolutely ghastly. He's going to push the pawn. He's going to push the rook. Oh, really? Hmm. King here? Two attackers on the pawn. Rook there, check. Counterattack the rook. He's got to move quite quick though. He's down to three minutes. Okay, counterattack the rook. Now he's squeezed my king even further back. Ow, missed that. Anyway, it's a lost position. Whatever happens now. If he trades off, yeah. Totally lost position. I can resign with dignity. I think that was really, really interesting. Mate in 33. Yeah, obviously. And the Dominos was watching. Good game. Okay, let's have a quick look. I'm fascinated to know where I lost my grip on that because there were points where I was feeling very confident. Or fairly confident, let's say. Definitely interesting. The boy played well, the boy Zoltar. And now it's working.
Well, as you can see, I was distinctly better at a couple of key points in the game, but my lord, I made seven blunders. Okay. Oh, book, that's a mistake. Okay, knight f3 was the right time to pull the trigger on that one. That's fine. Okay, it, yeah. See, I, I was a bit unsure about grabbing the center. So it's saying there's an attack to, okay. So here, maybe should, should I have grabbed the pawn back at the earlier opportunity? That's a blunder. Okay, I should have traded bishops and then regathered the material with development. Didn't even think about that because I that pawn ended up having a long and you know healthy life. G five could move here, okay, and that's poor. A four, woo. Black is slightly better. Knight C three was better there. And that's a blunder from black. And that was the great move. Okay, the one good move in the position. Inaccurate and oh, queen. Oh man, queen e4. The rook's trapped. Didn't even look at it. I was only concerned about open files and discoveries and pins and missed the simplest thing. Knight can't block the attack because knight's undefended. Damn it, Janet. And now king f2 is a blunder. Should have thrown my knight into the middle of the board. What? So what was the point of king f2? You know? Connecting the rooks, yeah, but... Knight to e4. Open the d-file. Threatening to come in. That was just front foot stuff, you know? Just forward thinking. Control, 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 attack. That's a mistake, but black's still better. That's a mistake. Okay, g4 here. <sighs> Threatens to win a queen. How? G4. And if queen takes... I've got a discovery, but I don't see the... I've kind of resolved my issues on that side of the board, I guess, but giving away pawn in the process. I guess winning back this one after rook, rook g1. Hmm, interesting. <sighs> yeah, that's just a funny old move. Okay. h3 was good there, yep. Yeah. And that's a mistake. Knight to e4 again. This knight really found itself quite awkward later on and, you know, it had a lovely threat there. That's good. Defending with the queen was better. Okay. Okay, but now black is distinctly better for a while. Okay, king g1 was, was the better move there. And rook takes, okay. All right, now we have a bunch of trades. Black's still winning though. Still very much winning. Rook d2 was best to defend the pawn, okay. And then that, oh, that was a mistake. King c6 was best there. Okay, and in a minute, black makes a blunder. That was mate in one, you are joke. Oh, is it just rook here? Ah, oh. rook f2 is mate in one. Wow.
Okay. And now I'm actually in a winning position. Still a pawn down. And I blow it. Let's see how I blow it. Yeah. It was that I was so excited about that checkmate idea. Right, should have just gone here. Defend the pawn. Yeah. Too excited. I'm, I'll probably play that move far too quickly as well. And then that's a great move. Yeah. And then we saw what happened in the end. So yeah, I mean, that, that was simply it. I said I didn't ca calculate it through, and I didn't. And I could have done, because I've got the ability to do it, and just didn't do it, and it cost the game. All right? I got so excited about my own little plan, I lost the key pawn, which is, you know, ensuring mate, and now this isn't mate, and I mean, it's still quite an equal position, but then again, I played another blunder at this point, Allowing my opponent to do that. And there we go. And there's no saving the game now with completely past C pawn. And uh, that's it. So there you go. Really, really insightful game there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed following through the process as I've worked it through. I hope you've enjoyed my mistakes as much as I have. They're all learning opportunities. That's the great thing about this game. Okay. We'll leave it there. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you soon.